A new day is dawning. We're going to need a lot of chips to get it done, and it's going to be fabulous. Yes, a chip fab. And of course, if that means if we're going to look at a bright, bright future, we've got to have uh, the brightest man we know, brighter, brightest with Herbert. Uh, we're the fab two, uh, which I hope doesn't just mean Ringo, but uh, we'll figure that out later. Uh, we're going to talk about, is it possible to make all these chips? Do we need to? And who is best equipped to do it? I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. I almost said I'm Brian and I'm not qualified to make chips, but I think that goes without saying. <laughs> Herbert, I have heard a rumor that you were at the shareholder meeting. Can you <laughs> confirm or deny? Well, I can confirm because I saw you and we shook hands and we hugged and we <laughs> had a really good time. Oh, together. yeah, so, I was yeah, on that live sure. stream with, with Herbert. <laughs> yeah. It was great. You heard Elon say, we're, we want to, if we can't get chips, we're going to fab them ourselves. Well, what do you take away from that? Is he serious? Can it be done? So absolutely serious. First of all, I think that that news was probably the biggest, uh, most important news of the entire thing. You know, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, close contenders, right? Oh, we're going to get unsupervised FSD in a couple months. We're going to get FSD in China and Europe in the first quarter next year. We're going to launch CyberCab in April. But this one is massive because it's it, it speaks to several things, right? One is it's a new multi-trillion dollar business. All last week, Elon was talking about space-based AI data centers. And Brian Wang has been kind of modeling this out. This is massive. And it's SpaceX is going to send those, create those space-based AI data centers. 70% of that cost of that is the actual chips. So, you know, the important, and then the other thing that it speaks to is that Elon is already today forecasting that the number of chips, you know, semiconductor chips that he's going to get from uh, Samsung, from TSMC, and then he even said, even Intel, if you can, if you move and you make any chips, we're going to buy it all from you. Uh, we need more than that. He is forecasting that he's going to need the, the beautiful thing that he did was these chips that there that he needs applies. It's the same thing for either the robots, the cars, or the AI data centers, and that's just a brilliant thing that he's done. And by the way, there's not a single company, not a single company that can say that they do more than just one of the, each individual. Thirty. This Tesla is the only company that does it for cars, but then they also do it for robots, but then they'll also do it for AI data centers, and they need more. So this. Uh, him doing this is again out of necessity. We need to create our own chips. Now it's very, very difficult to create this, uh, but you know how he thinks. I'm going to create a TerraFab. TerraFab is like a hundred thousand wafers per month. They, they plan to make what is it? A billion chips per year. That Not hundred thousand wafers. We're talking the big platters that, that are combine the chips, right? Because then you don't have to. Because I think that the chip size is already it's hit as Moore's law. It can't be made smaller. And so now the idea is to make these wafers that just everything's connected already. Um, but, you know, th this is uh, ambitious, but I just love it, right? This is Elon talking about what he needs to do. Uh, and uh, he says, I can't get enough. And so I'm going to need to build it myself. Yeah, this is a big, big, big deal. So I heard it a little differently. What I heard was this is a warning shot across the bow of all the chip makers saying step up because we don't. We will step in if we have to, but chip fabbing is really, really complicated. It is an extremely precise and difficult thing. Um, Apple doesn't fab. Google doesn't fab. They could, uh, well, could they? I don't know. But they would seem like likely candidates to want to not rely on outside manufacturing for those. It's just incredibly complicated, even for companies that already do it to get into that space. Yeah. How no. how big of a concern is uh, that? I mean, could you yeah. spend twenty billion and not get what you want? No, I don't. I don't agree. I, I still think that there's a reason why Tesla needs to create their own chips. It's not because hey, the suppliers aren't delivering. But it's obviously some of that. That's why they're forced to. Right. Uh, I think the, the, the TSMC apparently Tesla is their third customer, right? NVIDIA's and Apple is ahead of them. And the kind of chips that NVIDIA or the, the TSMC makes is has to uh, to serve all of these different use cases. Elon's version, like you can see with the AI5, their in-house chip of the AI5 is designed to be much more efficient because it's very, very specific to, you know, vision only to very quick latency. Uh, it costs them one-tenth to produce than NVIDIA's Blackwell chip. It's one-third the power. 
right? Um, it, it's got to be much more ideal for the uh, applications like a vehicle, autonomy, and robots. So no, I think Elon said, he explained it. Remember, I actually asked them the question at the shareholder. My question was, well, how did you make the decision to decide to create your own your own chips, your own GPUs, the AI5, uh, the AI series? And he explained it. It's just, I, I, we were using NVIDIAs, but it wasn't appropriate for what we're doing. And it was a necessity that I had to do it. So he's telling all his suppliers, build me more. But I think it's also the other way around. Like his forecast, like, okay, I'm going to make a hundred million robots at some point in the future. Where's all that going to come from? Do I rely on these three suppliers and then they're supplying all the other customers? No, he is. That's. I think that's, that's why I'm so excited. He is now really believing that these numbers, these crazy numbers are coming in the future. So what I would caution on the cost comparison is it kind of reminds me of the dojo comparison. We're mm. comparing what Elon has on paper, what Tesla has on paper sure. with what the other companies have in production. I had the luxury of speaking with an IBM chip designer at CES last year, and I asked him, I said, can you tell me about your, no, I cannot. I go, great. Can you tell me about Dojo? He said, yes, I know about Dojo. It was my job to look at Dojo and see if it was infringing on any of our patents, and it was not. And I asked, is it really going to be more power? I mean, look at all these benchmarks. Is it going to be that much more powerful? He said, you're comparing something on paper to something that's already in production. Yeah. All these other guys have stuff on paper too. They're just not telling you what it is. And the, it, the pipeline is long. I asked, why is it so delayed? And his answer was, it's not. That's just how long it takes to get from the step they're at to production. And my concern is that with chip fab uh, fabrication yeah. being so complicated that I mean, it is it is really, really hard. That's why there's so few companies that do it. And I'd be afraid that we would have a repeat of Dojo where they thought mm -hmm. they were on the right track and then they weren't. They or even with, even with 4680, batteries are very complicated, but they're nowhere near as complicated as mm -hmm. chip manufacturing. And I've talked to probably uh, Microsoft, IBM, and there's one other chip designer I had an opportunity to speak with. It's a very small industry. Everybody knows everybody. And it's the talent pool is not as deep as you might expect because it's so complicated. Um, yep. But the talent yep. is there. I, I just, I need you to convince me that it would even be possible at any price. Well, okay, like you said, uh, there. You know what Elon does and what Tesla does is they have necessity, they have vision, and they go, we're going to do this thing that's impossible. And then let's say four out of five succeed and one out of five fail. Our dojo was a failure. Maybe Cybertruck wasn't as big as they want, all those kind of things. So yes, Maybe. it's very possible, especially doing something that's crazy like this. Like you said, low margins. It's This is not easy. You have to, right? You can go down the list. You have to have very stable uh, land, right? You have to have no dust at all, blah, blah, blah. And it's just not easy. But... Elon did say on the, at the annual general meeting, uh, he said, I'm super hardcore on chips right now. As you uh, may be able to tell, I have chips on my brain, chips, chips, chips. That's all I dream about. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a need and he's, he, he's a, it's a strategically important, right? Whoever has the chips decides whether or not how many bots you can make next year. So he's going to try. Uh, will it fail? Maybe. It's expensive? Absolutely. But... If it succeeds in any, well, I mean, they are already making the AI series chips and, and they partnered with TSMC, then they switched to Samsung. So they've learned, that's why they did that, by the way. Uh, you know, they, they, they partnered, they switched a partner so they can learn how to do it on their own in the future. This is just what happens sometimes. Could you see them not building it themselves like 4680 but building it in a direct partnership like they did with 2170 isn't, and panasonic at isn't Nevada. that what it is that's the partnership with samsung right now you build a chip uh, yes. a gpu fabric here and we're gonna you know buy everything you make i'm gonna do and to have do, direct mm -hmm. feedback from our engineers to your engineers they design it tesla designs yeah. it they, they they create it so they don't need to but what did he say i had a partnership with samsung I'm realizing we don't enough. I then go and partner with TSMC as well. And then, oh, by the way, Intel, we haven't even talked to you yet. <laughs> we haven't even signed an agreement, but boy, if you can give anything, I'll take it. And he told all three, he said, if I'll buy whatever you can make, because uniquely Tesla is able to 
Use it for the cars, use it for the bots, and anything else that doesn't, you, you give me more, I'll buy it for because I'll create AI data centers out of it. So it's like almost unlimited need for Elon at this point. And worth noting that when you build one robot or one car, you don't need one chip. You need hundreds, thousands, it depends on the product specifically, but a chip isn't just the the main chip. There's a whole lot of other chips that go into it. I was just saying that what you've got is uh, an, when he's saying we're going to build a hundred million or ten, even 10 million of something, it doesn't mean you need 10 million chips. It means you need a lot of chips. Yeah. Uh, Yan Sai, who's a uh, Tesla AI engineer, uh, made a point and he said that, you know, it's one thing when you create GPUs for a data center, because what you don't realize is that the GPUs, you know, temperature fluctuations, uh, current fluctuations, a lot of these will die. And when they die, you just swap it out. But if you're in a brain, if you have, you are in a bot robot, or if you're in a car, you don't have the luxury of just swapping it out. So the chips that the, the Tesla needs, needs to be super resilient, super tolerant, very different than the ones that they are getting today. So. You know what I mean? Like if you really, really want to build 10 million robots, got to got to really focus on that on that chip in the GPU. Well, I don't want to build 10 million robots, but I bet <laughs> I could find you 10,000 robots that would do it for me. No. Oh. Yeah, right? You get it. You get That's it. That's <laughs> what we're doing. That's the goal. <laughs> who's going to who's going to build them? Guys, are you not paying attention? I would caution folks. There are a lot of people who seem to think that Optimus is here today and fully capable as any human today. It is not. And even when I do believe that version three is what will be the first publicly available, maybe not to you and I, but outside the company, and it is not going to be a surgeon. It is going to have a lot of capabilities, but not every capability on day one. I think that's an unrealistic ask. Do you have any updates on where we might be with the robot. I got yeah. to see the hand that was at we robot. I got to see it in person. I got to see all the little actuators and guys, the reason you want to go to events is because you get to see these things up close and you gain a level of understanding that's hard to get from videos. Uh, but if you're going to watch videos, watch mine and Herbert's because we. So uh, fortunately, uh, Elon and Tesla decided, which is the right decision, to not show the latest version. What we saw the hand mm -hmm. he confirmed is the version two. What we saw the bots, the two bots dancing are still the version 2.5s. They're not going to show you version three and they will show you version three in the first quarter next year when they start to do the production. And so, yeah, what we're seeing is still the old version. Um, totally agree with you. The reason why everything has been delayed where Elon initially said, oh, we're going to have, you know, 10,000 robots by the end of this year and a million by the next year. None of that came to, to be. We did not get 5,000 robots. We're still in the middle hundreds, right? That's agree. Totally agree with you that it's always slow. And then it, goes up. He's promising that robot production is going to be the fastest production of any, what they call most complex hardware products ever in, in the world, more than cell phones. But if depending on what time frame, right, it might be slower than cell phones for the first three, five years, and then all of a sudden it becomes bigger. So it depends on what your time frame is. Uh, but the reason why it took this long is because they have to create the parts themselves. So you know, before you even build the, art, the Optimus, you need to build the actuator. And I believe that that's what they're doing. They're, they've created a supply chain to build their own actuator uh, you know, product before they can build this one. So everything's been slowed down. But once it does, it'll get moving. So yeah, I totally agree with you. I'm not expecting, you know, and then you're not going to have general AGI for several years. You're not going to have a bot that can do multiple tasks for several years. It's going to be, you know, simple pick and place. So, uh, and but th sure. there's lots of jobs for Tesla to, to do that next year in the following year. So, in terms of general AGI, I would settle for, you know, Sergeant AGI <laughs> in the robot army. Now, the other thing that was kind of neat, and this is a little bit of a tangent before we get back to the point, is that on stage there were two robots at home. You could see them. But to me, I thought they were just props, just decorations. Yeah. Yeah. And then I took my seat and I noticed they were swaying yeah, a little. Swaying I'm like, a little bit. wait mm -hmm. a minute, those are, those are active. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they danced i wonder what the backup plan was had the compensation plan not passed. <laughs> maybe it's a sad dance instead uh be interesting to find out and i i had 
and I know I'm probably not supposed to disclose this. The time council frowns on this, but I figured out, and I'll just tell you guys, the reason Elon's timeframes are sometimes uh, a mystery to us to unravel is because as a time traveler, he forgets when now is. And yeah. when you say, when will FSD be solved? And he's like, well, it is. And we're like, oh, really? When? And he's like, in the future. Yeah. Like, no, Elon, we're in the now still. And he just, it's just easy to forget, you know? So that's, uh, I like you know, that and again, like it. I probably, <laughs> probably shouldn't disclose the time travel secrets, but, uh, but I already have in the future. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of already done, uh, on the event, boy, it was amazing. Um, I'm not concerned with some of these things being late. I will say that I have many questions remaining about chip fabrication, which I will be uh, mm -hmm. addressing with some of my contacts. As you know, I do most of my traveling, not to make videos, though I do that as well, but to hoard experts. And I've got a thick Rolodex full of experts who will sometimes go on camera, but at the very least answer my questions. And that's what I'll be trying to get my head wrapped around. Guys, if you get a chance to get brighter, would you consider doing it? Head on over to Herbert's channel. He has got the most amazing all-star lineup of regulars and in less frequent contributors who will pop in for one or two videos here and there. It is a great channel. Everybody else like subscribe, stay tuned and juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots, perhaps next weekend at Showtime Raceway in Clearwater, Florida for Cyberfest and Furious.